Are we live? Yep. We're live. Hey, it's guys. Five. Live at five. Hey. I'm Paul Wontor. Andy Lefkowitz. Well, you're right here at the heart of Broadway.com. Yes. Uh, oh, my God, you guys. Frenchie Davis is here. She's in the view upstairs. We love her. We're psyched. She looks fabulous. Yeah, you do. You look fabulous. She's fantastic. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk to her. But first, let's get some news over with. A lot yeah. happening. Every day is a lot yeah. happening on Broadway right now. Yeah, so What's happening? the new Broadway revival of John Guare's Six Degrees of Separation starts previews tonight, and uh, the production stars Allison Janney and John Benjamin Hickey and Corey Hawkins. Yes. Uh, this is actually the last show of the season is dark previews before we... Oh, is it? It is. Oh, it is. a milestone. Um, something cool about this production is Allison Janney is playing the role that was originated by her West Wing co-star, Stockard Channing. Yeah. So that's a little nerdy uh, tip Do you know this there. part? It's a great... Uh, I do. It's, it's awesome. Fantastic. It's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. And the movie's great, too. If you guys want to do some research before... I'm going to center us a little bit. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do some research, it's it's so good. So I'm excited. This is like awesome. an amazing, amazing cast. Yeah. So uh, the new Broadway revival of Present Laughter opens tonight oh at the St. James Theater. Another opening, another, another show. Another opening, y'all. Every day. Seriously. And uh, this one stars Kevin Kline and Kate Burton, Christine Nielsen, and Colby Smulders in her Broadway debut. Right. So that's pretty darn exciting. Yeah, it's at the St. James. You don't St. get St. plays James. at the St. James. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Oh, it's a musical yeah. house, but yeah. Um, some big news today, Carrie Russell is going to lead a one-night reading of Wendy Wasserstein's play, An American Daughter, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty starry cast. Um, it's also going to include Hugh Dancy, Jonathan Groff, Raul Esparza, and Quincy Tyler Bernstein. Wh and where's this happening? This when? is happening on May 8th at 7 o'clock at the Tony Kaiser Theater. And, uh, That's second stage, right? It, it is, yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. 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 Cool. So, uh, so that's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, some other cool news. Lincoln Center is going to transform its Claire Tao this Theater. This is cool. I'm yeah, into this um, like immersive space for this production called Ghost Light, and uh, this company called Third Rail is teaming up with Lincoln Center Theater uh, to do this production that invites audiences to follow performers through a series of real and dreamlike landscapes beyond the footlights. What? So yeah, so What's you're that gonna mean, be walking Andy? through the hallways of the WTF of, of, does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be walking backstage and through the hallways of the Claire Tau Theater. Uh, it's it sounds pretty incredible. Yeah, it sounds crazy. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah, I'm there too. Uh, so the London production of Mamma Mia uh, cast some new stars. Uh, they're bringing in uh, a few of its touring star productions. How many years has Mamma Mia been running in London? A long, long time. I think like 1998, 98. It's almost 20 yeah, years. It started there and then came yeah, here. Yeah, 2000 correct? here, so a long time. A long, long time. Uh, but Sarah Poyser, who played Donna on the international tour, is going to be playing it in London. And uh, her... Uh, Friends uh, Tanya and Rosie are going to be played by Kate Graham and Jacqueline Braun, also coming over from the tour. Cool. And they start June 12th. Uh, so Tim Minchin, who's back on Broadway with a new score for Groundhog Day, right. his Broadway debut musical, Matilda, he's taking the song from that, When I Grow Up, and creating a children's picture book with Simon & Schuster. So that's cash. Yeah. That's cash in the bank. It so is. That's smart. And good good job, Tim Mitch. Sounds pretty good. That's a good idea. Yeah, some nice holiday gifts coming up for nieces and nephews. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm down with that. I wonder that. what the illustrations are going to look like. I know, right? Interesting. Yeah, I'm curious. So um, uh, a couple nights ago, MCC hosted its miscast benefit. Yes, of course. And Mandy Gonzalez, whom we all adore, uh, and is in Hamilton She's in right Hamilton, now. Yeah. She is. Um, she sang Waving Through a Window from Dear Evan Hansen. And we have an exclusive video of that on the website yep. that y'all have to sit down and watch. Go watch that immediately. Because it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the new off-Broadway musical, The Lightning Thief, Starring Chris McCarroll, opened last night. Percy Jackson musical. Indeed, right? indeed. And it's based on the best selling young adult fantasy novel. Right. Uh, so we have some awesome red carpet photos from that opening that are worth checking out. Nice blue suit. Chris. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah very snazzy. Uh, also, uh, we have an exclusive song from Duncan Sheik and Kyle Jarrow's new musical Whisper House, mm. which starts previews in London tomorrow. 
it's a it's a spooky ghost story musical and uh, yeah definitely uh, worth giving a listen to that song on the site. Duncan Sheik's been working on that one for a, a long a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it been was like the, the, the reading of the public like mm-hmm. seven or eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. It's been out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and lastly, uh, we have Rachel Bay Jones and a fantastic show people that we published today on the site. Yes. Uh, Rachel Bay Jones of Dear Evan Hansen. Did you know her whole story that she like was going for Broadway for so long? I didn't know. I didn't really that. know. I didn't really like she was on Broadway. And she was a teenager, and then she like was gone for 20 years and, and then came back and now obviously things are happening for her every season it feels like she's having a great moment it is, it's such yeah. a great story and, and she's Tony nominations are coming out indeed. soon indeed and I think uh, she just well she just got a Lartel nomination right yes yeah it's award time it sure is what and uh, lastly uh, Joshua Harmon uh, Building Broadway um, Playwright of Significant Other, Bad Jews. Um, Beth Stevens sat down with him and uh, did a fantastic Building Broadway video. Um, actually, one of his inspirations is Wendy Wasserstein, who wrote An American Daughter. Absolutely. He's a gay Wendy Wasserstein. Look at that. I don't know. I love it. Uh, <laughs> but that's it for news. We have Frenchie Davis here, guys. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Thank you for stopping you by, Andy. It, but guys. We have a diva in the house. So let's get Frenchie Davis up here. The world is her runway. Bring your drink. Bring your... Uh, Frenchie Davis is off Broadway. Look, there's a... This is the view upstairs. I love this artwork. This, art, this artwork is... I love is, it, too. It's so fabulous. Um, come on in. Say hi to the people. Hi, people. Wait, let me... I'm short, so i got to right. figure out a way to gracefully so, oh, I, I, get okay. up here. All right, let's there we we'll go. figure this we out. It. We might... You, we have, you might be too high now. We'll see. Oh, wait. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust. <gasps> I did it. <laughs> I love your t-shirt. Thank you. The world is my runway. Well, you know. Do you wear that every day? I wish I could. <laughs> but, you know, laundry. It's a good... It's a good. <laughs> <laughs> I also love uh, the the lipstick we show them. I Thank love you, that. Frenchie Davis. Lipstick well, you stains. Know, I'm loving it. The Dior Rouge Nine Nine Nine. That's the name of the color. You Shout look, out to Kristen Dior. You look fabulous. Thank you. So good to see you. Good how to see you how too. are things? You know. How's the life? How's well, life? I can't. Complain. The life. That's be a good show for you. I know. That, I, the, what, I just. Oh my God! I just dreamcast you. Shout out to Lily. What? She's right. So Wait a minute. Fierce. That's a good role for you, Sonia. Anyway. Oh my God. But, yes. <laughs> but let's talk about this role. Yes. You upstairs. You attending bar downtown. I am. I'm attending bar downtown. <laughs> so talk. Tell me about it. Tell me about this fabulous lady you're playing. Well, I play Henrietta. Uh, they call her Henry. Mm-hmm. And she's sort of the matriarch and and the patriarch, arguably, <laughs> uh-huh. of. Uh, the upstairs lounge, and um, she's no nonsense and and tough as nails on the surface, but um, she has a genuine love uh, for the community of people who frequent her bar, Mm -hmm. and um, she feels a sense of protectiveness over them, and um, she's a fighter, and Mm -hmm. I love, I love playing this character. I love her. So we're in 1970s, 1973, New Orleans. Right, right. Uh, fabulous bar. The upstairs is a real bar. There's yes, a real story. Mm-hmm. Is this a real woman? Um, I don't know. It's I think sort of she, like a, she's a, a hybrid yeah. of a number of the real women who were part of that community. Um, Max Vernon, our writer, mm-hmm. um, spoke uh, about how he uh, and why he created this character and it was because when he was doing his research about the upstairs fire, and I don't, for those of you who are watching, yeah, fill them um, in the show was based on um, the upstairs lounge, which was a gay owned nightclub in New Orleans in the 70s. And Gay Pride Weekend 1973, someone set it on fire. And over 30 people died. And up until Orlando, uh, the upstairs fire was the biggest massacre in LGBT history. Mm. And a big part of the reason that so few people even know about the Upstairs Lounge is because we're talking about the South and the 70s, a time and a space where it was quite dangerous to be out of a closet. And So people um, who survived wouldn't come forward. The people wouldn't come forward. Uh, Churches turned people away when they tried to plan uh, funeral services. Um, There was even a gentleman whose body was left burned Mm. halfway out of the window for, for days. Wow. And someone cruelly uh, said, well, at least it burned his, their dresses off. Mm. And that's how um, callous. I even read about a gentleman who uh, used to drive all the way from Biloxi, Mississippi, to go to the upstairs lounge because it was the only place 
that LGBT people in the South had to I go to. I did that drive. That's a long drive. That's, I know. To put that in context. It is. Yeah. It's a very long drive. Yeah. Um, because my, fam my dad's side of the family is from that whole mm. region, the Gulf Coast. Um, and... You know, so... But you were talking about the, the story of the... Right, the and story, so yeah. when they had the funeral services, a lot of the people um, who went to the funeral, uh, they decided to try to sneak out of the back of the mm -hmm. church because the media had, right. you know, found out yeah. that they were having services for the victims, and uh, these people were, were so afraid of being outed that they wanted to sneak out of the funeral through the back door, and it was the lesbians who said, fuck that. We walked in through the front door. We're walking out of the front door. Right. And so our writer, Max, sort of created the Henry character, um, you know, uh, to pay tribute to mm -hmm. those to those brave women. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really honored um, and really, you know, proud to mm -hmm. uh, be bringing her to life, bringing mm -hmm. them to life. And you have that power in you. So, like, you, like it's, you know, that, that F that. that you know, <laughs> come on. French I mean, that's, not, that's, that's easy for you to grasp that energy, yeah. right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're a powerhouse. Well, thank you. Powerhouse. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, way back. American Idol. Yes. Discovering you on American Idol and then Rent. I mean, uh, seasons, how many times did you, did you sing Seasons of Love on Broadway? Probably 525,600 <laughs> times. <laughs> Give or take. When's the last time you sang it? <laughs> um, recently. Really? Uh, our um, Mark Richard Ford, who was one of my favorite Tom Collins of all times. Mm. Uh, we lost him recently. Mm. He passed away oh, a few weeks that. ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, he passed away a few weeks ago, and um, uh, all of us got together and sang Seasons of Love and just wow. took time to remember him. Mm. Rest in peace, Mark. He was a beautiful, beautiful person. Yeah. And um, so talented. immensely talented. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Luke, Lukia, I love that name, said, what inspired you to become an actress? Did, now, did you, now, after the um, American Idol, journey mm -hmm. did you did you were you you were already on the acting path were you i was already on the before american idol yeah. um i majored in theater in right. college okay. um at howard university go bisons and um then i got my first job uh ironically debbie allen gave me one of my first jobs mm. uh i got cast in the chorus in her production of carmen jones at the kennedy center and then I got a chance to do Little Shop of Horrors and Jesus Christ Superstar in Germany. And it was three months after I returned from Germany that I auditioned for Idol. So I had already kind mm. of started my theater journey. Right. And I had just auditioned for Rent after doing Little Shop. And then I ended up doing Idol um, and missed my callback. And then they, after the Idol, everything happened. The producers of Rent reached out again. Right. And I did my callback. And... Then I ended up doing rent on Broadway. For I, you know, years. I remember your first night. I was in the audience your first night. Oh my god! I was there. Oh, I was in the box. I was so terrified. Were you? Yeah. Were you? Yeah. I mean, my Broadway debut. Yeah. 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 What about now? Is is uh, is doing a show? Is it just like natural? Do you ever do you ever still get like stage fright? No, I, I get stage fright every day. Really? Hell yeah! <laughs> because they never they never give me the easy role. It's like seasons of love solo. You've got to <laughs> hit this high C, and like now. As Henry, I'm belting F sharps, yeah. and it's never, you know, and then I did Dream Girls. Yeah. It's like, it's never, you know, so it's always terrifying. Yeah, you're not in the ensemble and of Carmen Jones anymore. I mean, and the, the cool thing about Henry is that nobody's played her before. Right. So, yeah. there, I don't have to worry about being compared to, like, right. Jennifer Holliday. Right. Or, <laughs> right, right. Or Gwen Stewart and all, <laughs> of these, all of these amazing women who did the roles first. So, um, you know. But it, it's still, I think that when you stop getting nervous, it's time to retire. I, I, I still um, get really nervous. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you have dream roles? Do you, are there roles that you would love to yeah, you sink know, your teeth into? I mean, Madam T in Les Mis oh, would that's be a fun one. really fun. Uh -huh. I never heard her called that before, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Madam T. <laughs> Let's see, who else? Um, I mean, you know, when I'm older, I'd love to be Mama Morton, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe that's like mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years down the line. Right. Or, or maybe sooner, we'll see. Um, there are so many um, roles that I would love the chance to. So wait, topic change. You're getting your master's? Is that, 
Yeah. Is that, that's what I read in your bio? Yeah. So tell me about that. So <laughs> I'm getting my MBA in uh-huh. uh, music business. Um, I've always kind of been a nerd. I just happen to have an artistic talent. So you just happen to be able to sing like that. I, right. <laughs> <laughs> Big belting nerd. Right. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. And um, in 2014, I, I decided to go back and, and finish my degree because I did idle my senior year of college. Okay. And, um, and so in 2014, I decided to go back and finish uh, my bachelor's degree, and I graduated. And uh, then I just decided, you know, what the hell, let's see, you know, if I can get accepted to a master's program. Uh, because eventually I would like to uh, do the tenured professor track like okay. when I'm not performing. I mm-hmm. would love to uh, teach on the university level or even be the dean of the College of Fine Arts at a university. You're giving me very so. dean energy today. <laughs> I, I, I'm buying all of this. I'm buying all of this. I think this is going to work. I think it's going to work, yeah, too. Yeah, I think it's going to work. So this is my... <laughs> so my, my passion outside of singing and performing is education and working with young people, and so I've decided to continue to further my studies in the hopes of being able to one day merge art with education mm-hmm. and, and inspire the next generation of artists and um, and inspire them to not only nurture their artistic talents but their academic ones as well. I think too often we tell young people that if you can sing or dance or dribble a ball, right. that you don't have to nurture uh, your intellect, and I just... You know, I don't think that's true. Mm-hmm. I think you should uh, pursue greatness in, in all of those parts of yourself mm-hmm. that um, that make you, you know, who you are. So are you actually in class while you're doing the show? I am. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm, I took a break this semester. Okay. I was like, there's no way in hell. Because <laughs> I have to take, I have to take like a microeconomics um, oh. and macroeconomics this next go around. And I was like, there's no way, like I barely made it through business math and accounting. <laughs> so like, there's no way I'm going to be, you know, doing eight shows a week and studying for this class. But I, I start classes again in June. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gearing up. Gearing up. Summer school. Getting ready. Summer school. <laughs> That's, like, get it done. You know, I love summer school. I don't know why I didn't do this all along. It's the best thing that ever happened. Let's just get in and get out. <laughs> uh, uh, have you ever thought about writing a musical? I have, actually. I actually just uh, I recently registered an idea with the Writers Guild. What? Um, called Evil... Evil the Musical, it's about, it's the untold story of the Black Witches of Oz. Since they won't cast a Black Elphaba, fuck it, I'll write it myself. <laughs> Look at you, that's a good idea, wait a minute. I know, right? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a good idea. You got a lot of ideas up your sleeve. I know. <laughs> and fabulous t-shirts. Thank you. Do you have a lot of like fun theme t-shirts? I, yeah, you all do? my t-shirts. I almost wore the one that said Dorothy in the streets, Blanche in the sheets. But I thought, <laughs> let's ease him into it, you know. <laughs> let's not give it all to him at once. <laughs> Have you been to the new Golden Girls Cafe? No, but I'm so... I think I'm going to go for my birthday. I'm yeah. going to have brunch there on my birthday. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Yeah. I wear the shirt. I deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was thinking... Well, I have a t-shirt that says Queens. It's like Queen, the rock band, but yeah. it's all the members of the Golden Girls cast. <laughs> <laughs> Blanche Devereaux is my spirit animal. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming by. I adore you. And by the way, you smell good. Oh, thank just, you. People can't. It's not. This is not in smell a vision, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she smells good. Uh, the view upstairs, everybody, is down on Bleecker, right? It's at Forty Five yes. Bleecker, Lynn Redgrave the Theater, Lynn Theater at the Theater. Culture Project, and it's also like a really cool experience. Yes, right? and it it's is. a super fun cast. It's immersive. It's a party, it, and it's it emotional, is. and it's a throwback. Yes, it and is. it's necessary, and it's, it's not. You know, it sound really heavy based on what you said, but it's actually like. It's a really celebration. Fun. It's a celebration yeah. of the lives of the people who frequented the upstairs lounge. And it's a celebration of the fact that even though we have a long ways to go, we have actually come a long way. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes I think while we're, you know, in this struggle and we're still fighting to be seen and heard, I think it's important to just take a minute and remember that we have there has been progress. Yeah. If you could time travel to the upstairs lounge, like right now, if we can just like snap and you're there, what would you order at the bar? Bourbon. 
<laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> Hello, that's what, you, that's what you do it. Yep. Get <laughs> two, I want one too. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Frenchie, for stopping for by. Me. So good to see you. Good to see you too. And everybody, uh, go check out The View Upstairs and come back tomorrow at 5 o'clock with another fabulous guest. Bye. <laughs>